Hello and welcome back for another Photoshop tutorial. I am picking up where we left off with our last video and continuing the sports theme. If you watched the last video, we ended up creating a Los Angeles Lakers poster design. This time around, we're going with my favorite team of all time, which is the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's an ice hockey team. And I know that, again, this is something different than some of my previous styles and some of my previous videos, but I did have a few people that enjoyed the last video and I wanted to try a couple of these myself just for something new. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into this tutorial and let's get started. All right, so we're working with another 1350 by 1080 canvas size here. Let's go ahead and turn on our first Steven Stamkos. This is gonna be all about him for this video. So we're gonna press P on our keyboard to bring up the pen tool. And I just want to quickly get an outline of Steven Stamkos here. We're going to make a selection of him so we can extract him and remove him from that background. So let's just make our way around Steven Stamkos real quick. And once we get to the end, you can just go ahead and right click, make a selection, and then we're going to hit OK and then add a layer mask so that way it removes him from that background. All right, so little Stamkos is done. Time to take care of big Stamkos. Same method, pen tool, extracting him from the background. And then once you have him extracted, you just want to add a layer mask so that way we can once again remove him from the background. Perfect. So now we got big Stamkos, little Stamkos. For this guy, we're going to press Ctrl or Command T. I want to resize him and I want to make sure that he fits our entire canvas. This is going to be the main uh, visual here. So just kind of getting him into the right spot, something like this, and then bringing in little Stamkos. We'll just put him right under uh, big Stamkos' uh, NHL logo right there. And we can resize him just a little bit. All right, I'm happy with that. We're dropping in our ice rink image. And I'm just scaling this up so that it looks proportionally correct with the size and our smaller Stamkos. So something like this. And we're going to clip that onto big Stamkos. And then just using a soft round brush, we just want to fade away some of this area into the jersey. You still want to have some of that jersey peeking through. It's just going to be a nice soft blend so you can see the ice rink, but you can also see the jersey from behind. All right, so that looks pretty good. And then we can just do some minor touch-ups real quick, just scaling him down a little bit and uh, just maybe clearing up some ice down here, bringing some of this back. Perfect. All right, so we're off to a good start here. This is looking really nice. I want to go ahead and build up the audience here. So I've got this image here that I'm just going to use for the audience and mainly looking at the left side here. So I've turned down the opacity to see how this lines up and just kind of getting it into a nice spot that we can use. We're going to invert, add a layer mask, Invert it by pressing Ctrl or Command I'm, and then just painting it back in. You're not going to tell from far away uh, that it's a different audience than the ice rink, so it'll still look really nice and um, blend it together. So we're going to add another one on top of this, and we're going to use that for the right side here. So let's open that image here, and I just kind of like the lightning wind screen at the top. That's mainly why I'm using this one here. So once again, just kind of scaling this down so it fits and is consistent with the image on the left adding the layer mask and then inverting that once more by pressing Ctrl or Command I and then softly painting this back in. I don't want to, I still want to see some of that C in parts of the jersey again so we're not doing too much, just a little bit. So it just kind of blends and fits that or makes it look like it's realistic with our ice picture. All right, so with this logo that we dropped in, we're putting it in the very back and scaling it all the way up and just kind of finding a good spot for it. I think that looks good. And then on top of that, we're going to drop in the Tampa Bay skyline here. So this is going to fill up that logo. So we want to make sure that this is stretched and uh, scaled up. And then we're going to clip that onto the logo. And then we can just move this around just to find a good spot for us. This is all about personal preference. So and a nice little effect that you can do here, just playing around with the logo and just adding a few elements that um, is related to Tampa Bay. All right, so all of our elements are in place. Let's go ahead and start making this look nice. And we're going to start off with a hue and saturation adjustment layer. We're going to clip that onto the logo and we want to desaturate that. I don't want any color in that city skyline. And then next we're going to add a gradient map once more, clipping it to that logo. And I'm just going to switch these up so that way the shadows are the dark points and that the brighter spots are the white points. So let's click on that black stop and we're going to work with the shadows first here. We're going to go ahead and use the color 0B152F and let's hit OK. All right, and then we're going to click on the highlights. And for this one here, we're going to use 3A6BBB and then hit OK. 
this is going to be our foundation for our logo here. And then we can go ahead and just put this into one of these blend modes. Um, let's work with uh, hard light looks nice. I'm going to go back to our city skyline here and just drop the opacity ever so slightly. But here, this is going to be our foundation. We're going to work with Stamp Coast now. And I'm adding another solid color. For this, we're using 419 triple F. And then once we have that hit OK, we're going to put this into the multiply blend mode. We're going to invert that mask and then slowly paint this back in so we can get rid of some of those white tones and introduce more blue. We're essentially going to start creating some light out of nothing here. So we're just going to build up this effect. We're adding another solid color on top of this. For this one, it's going to be 007 EFF and hit OK. And for this, we're going to use another blend mode for uh, let's work with um, overlay looks good. And then we're going to invert that mask and lower the opacity a little bit here. It's about 50% half of that intensity. And we've inverted that mask and just painting some of this light back in. Again, we're just creating glows and creating light from scratch here. So just softly introducing some of that light back in. And you can see the before and after on some of these solid color adjustment layers that we've added. And then just on a blank layer, stick in with that same color tone on normal, no blend mode. We're just going to do a couple of dabs with a low opacity brush here, just again to bring some light in. Just a few dabs around the jersey. And then we can lower the opacity on that so it's not overbearing. All right, so we're off to a great start with this. I want to just do some quickly adjustments and editing with this mask so we can get rid of some of that original detail that was in the uh, the mask and the visor there. So let's just clean this up a little bit. All right, just using a soft round brush, taking my time with this as I go. I want to be careful with the edges because you still want to see where the visor ends. You still want to preserve some of that definition and we're going to clean this up a little bit. I know it looks pretty bad right now, but don't worry, we're going to touch it up, make it look good. All right, very well. And I've grouped that together and I'm just adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer and just desaturating some of this so I can get rid of uh, the color, especially on the top there. All right, once more, just kind of cleaning this up and going back and forth just to see how it looks. And I think we're, we're definitely making some progress here. Now I just want to add a very, very soft white color on top of this just to kind of give the impression that we've got a bit of a reflection going on because it is glass or plastic. I'm not even really sure what the materials, but either way, there is going to be a bit of a reflection. So we're just manually creating that effect and we're just using a very light color here and just kind of doing some different dabs around here just to give you the illusion that there is some sort of reflection going on. And then just by the edges, I just want to create a little bit of shadow and just a little bit of depth to kind of give us the impression that we are towards the edge of the visor. Very, very subtle adjustments. And then now where you have shadows, you're also going to have a little bit more highlights towards the edges as well. And we're just about wrapping up with this. I'm liking how this is looking. And um, yeah, this is looking really good, especially from creating this from scratch. All right, we're going to continue to build up the intensity on the jersey. And we're just going to find a nice saturated blue tone, solid color here, just to use for that. And we're going to play around with the blend modes once more, put this into overlay. And like I said, we're just amplifying some of the light intensity on this jersey to really sell this effect. So I'm just going over some of the areas where I've already see highlights on the jersey. So I'm just using that as my template and just going over some of those spots. All right, and then we're going to inversely just do uh, some shadow tones here. And now we're going to just kind of work and build some shadows from smaller Stamkos. Uh, the light will be from behind, so I want some of the shadows to be in front of him. So just adding some shadows from the skates and under his body. We can clean that up a little bit. And then just giving the stick a shadow as well. If you didn't see I what I did to the brush tip, I just kind of condensed it so it's nice and squished. All right, and just building up a little bit more shadow in front of them, so that looks good. Okay, so I've clicked on the original thumb layer or thumbnail of Stamkos, gone into the camera off filter, just doing some little things like sharpening, increasing the contrast, just to uh, do some minor edits uh, to build up this foundation here. We can play around with the hue of the 
the, the warmer tones here, take some of that out or just desaturate a little bit, something like that. And then for color grading, we can just play around with some of these colors, introducing a little bit more of those bluish tones to help with build that consistency with our environment. All right, so let's just kind of see like the before and after of how this looks. Let's just go ahead and turn that off. There's the original, there's the after. So once more, a little bit softer look. And now we've just sharpened it up, increasing some of the red or taking some of the reds out. All right, so applying those same techniques uh, to small stamp coats as well. Basically the exact same thing we did with the large one. I'm just doing that with uh, small stamp coats here. All right, so now that we have both of these effects applied to both of them, I'm adding a solid color here and just finding a kind of a washed out darker blue tone here. And this is just gonna help with uh, the shadows on small stamp coats. And I'm just gonna tweak this up a little bit, find a more saturated color, something like this. So just like what we did with the large stamp coats, I'm using the material already here as a template, just going over some of the dark points and increasing the shadows on that so we can build up this contrast and then just adding some extra like in between the legs it might be a little bit darker here but for the most part i'm just going over some of the dark points already to again sell this effect and just create a little bit more contrast for some visual interest here and i'll do a little bit more work later on once we start adding more glows but for right now i'm just kind of giving us a foundation to work off of and for the highlights, I'm just using an exposure adjustment layer and increasing the intensity, inverting the mask, and then uh, painting this back in. So I'm not adding a solid color for this one, just an exposure adjustment layer will do the trick. But once more, as you can see, I'm just going over the, already the spots that look like they're highlighted and amplifying some of that effect. And just on a regular brand new layer here, I'm just gonna add a couple more dabs of some glow here and um, Add just uh, yeah, just a little bit more background glow for some separation between little stamp coats and big stamp coats. So something like this, I think, is going to look good. We're going to add some more effects at the bottom to help sell this uh, lighting effect. But for right now, we're just kind of getting the foundation going here. All right, time to work on this logo. And for this, we're going to use 4C99CA. Hit OK, and we're going to put this into an overlay blend mode. We're going to add a lot of different solid color adjustment layers to build up this effect. And you can just see here, if I just turn this off and on real quick, just alone, how we're gonna start making this pop a little bit. All right, so time to add another solid color. And for this one in particular, we're gonna go ahead and use 111549, hit okay. And then for this, we're gonna find a different blend mode to use. So let's go ahead and put this into screen blend mode. And again, so, Here's before, after, and then if we even shut both of these off, that's what we started out with. Or sorry, that's what we started out with. And uh, let's add those on, that's where we're at now. We're building up this intensity, making it pop, and we're just gonna keep on going here. All right, so on this bottom, we're just gonna erase some of the bottom parts there. I wanna have a gradual light to darkness change going from the top of the lightning bolt down to the bottom. So with this new solid color, we're gonna use 6BABFA. And then we're gonna add a different layer mask, or sorry, not a different layer mask, we're gonna put a different blend mode. Uh, we're gonna use overlay for this. And then uh, just at the top here, I've inverted the mask and we're gonna bring some of this back in, just particularly around the top of the area. Like I said, we're gonna go from light to dark, starting from the top to bottom. And then on the next one, we're gonna use 0577B9. And we're gonna, with this layer in particular, we're gonna really make this stand out. So we're gonna go to color dodge invert the mask, and then just right around the face here, bringing some of this glow intensity in. All right, and then we're gonna add some really cool highlighting effects that interact with the jersey as well. So right now we're just building the effect with the lightning bolt itself. And then let's go ahead and use 157DEB. And this is gonna go on to large stamp coats here. So like I said, time to add the color dodge. We're gonna start adding in some of these interacting glowing effects on top of the helmets and other parts of Stamco's here. All right, so I've grouped all together. I just wanted to flip this around because you'll see here with the small Stamco's, I, I wanted to see the full hockey stick and that's mainly the motivation behind it. Now, because I did flip large Stamco's around here, um, at the end, um, I had to adjust uh, a lot of the logos and stuff because now everything's reversed. 
Um, and you're not really going to see that, but I, at the end final result, I did just kind of patch things up a little bit so that way everything looks, you know, correct and not reversed. Alright, so just adding a bit of highlights to Stamco's here. We're repeating a lot of the same techniques that we did before, so that's kind of why I'm just speeding through this real quick with the highlights and the shadows. I'm just thinking to myself, okay, obviously the edges will be a little bit more light intensity, so we're adding some highlights there and some parts that are a bit more covered up, we're going to have the shadows. And then um, for the layer style for our logo here, I've added an inner glow. And because I want to start building more of that glowing effect and, and really selling this glowing effect here. Uh, so I've added a little bit of an edge glow and now I'm using a different solid color, 44C8FF. And this is going to again help sell some of this glowing just from the edges of the lightning bolt itself. So I'm going to invert the mask and I've already started the glowing process. Now I'm just amplifying this and trying to sell this just a bit more. There we go, just right on the edges a little bit here. And this is looking really good. I'm liking how this is shaping up so far. Alright, so this next part we're going to add some flares. And if you don't have one, you can do this manually here. So in the brush settings, you can just pinch these corners. And then you can use that um, and it'll work as a nice flare brush. Now I do have some already, so I'm just going to go to um, some of my brushes here and just pick one that I think looks interesting and something that might look a little effective. So let's just go ahead and use this one right here. And we're just going to do some dabs around parts of this helmet here. Dab there and there. We can even switch up the brushes, go on the visor. And we're just adding that little extra bit of detail to sell this effect. And it's looking really cool here. All right. So with that added on there, we're going to drop in um, this space dust, galaxy dust, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to put this into a screen blend mode. And we're going to just scale this down a little bit by pressing Ctrl or Command T. And just moving this somewhere right behind Stamkos here. All right, and then let's make a copy of that by pressing Command J. We can shut that off for right now. And for this, we can just, on that original image, we're just gonna erase some of the edges so we don't have those harsh lines. Bring the duplicate copy on this bottom right corner here once more, just kind of cleaning up some of the edges. So this is gonna be part of the effect that is alluding to the, um, the bright glowing effect. So this is just gonna help add that on. And now we're gonna just do some adjustments here. So we're going to do a lot of different glowing effects to add some of this light on the corners and the edges of the jersey here. Just experimenting with some different blend modes. Color Dodge works really well, especially with some of these highlights. So you're going to see me use just a couple of different methods here and a couple of different solid color adjustment layers to sell this effect. So like before, I'm just speeding through some of this because it's the same techniques that I've already been using. I'm just going through this for the sake of time for this video and so you can just see how my process is for creating this image. And as I'm doing this you can see how I'm just building up this effect one layer at a time, taking your time with this. I think, I don't want to say the more layers you use the better it is but you know the more layers you have the more you can just kind of slowly build up the effect is really just at least how I do things. So we've added on to Big Stamp Coast, now time to add all of those effects to Little Stamp Coast. And on the bottom left corner here, we're also going to add some more effects there. So that's why I already have some highlights on the left there. So with this image here, same thing, just putting it into a screen blend mode. And now we're going to start adding this on the bottom left just to help sell the highlight effect on small Stamkos coming from the left. I just want to make it seem a bit realistic. And here's another image, same thing, putting it into screen blend mode. I just like all of these cool little cloud, haze, stars, whatever you want to do. I think it's just really makes for a cool effect and especially for something like this. It looks really nice together. So I just want to clean up some of the edges here. And I'm going to have another image as well. So I've got a few of these different images that we're going to use to just create just something fun, just something different. So here's my next one. Same thing. You can see that you can see the theme here. Just a lot of different cosmic dust and, and effects. And sometimes using these images is just more effective than just using a brush to create this. 
So we're just finding a nice little home for this guy here. And making a copy of that, putting this one up here. We can even rotate it a little bit just for some variety. Alright. Yeah. And then this is a fun one here. This is going to go all the way to the left. And we're just going to have just a little bit, a hint of just that right side there. Um, just something like that. It's not lightning by any means, but you know, it can still kind of fit the theme. And now we're just going to kind of amplify some of these lighting effects and the intensity to once more just have that interaction with our environment, with our players, to help just build the, the cohesiveness and realism of the piece altogether. And ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much coming to an end. We're just right now adding those final touches, those nice little, little last minute edits here to just bring everything together nicely. And we're gonna add one last little fun effect before we go to the camera raw filter. And to do that, um, we wanna go to the large Steven Stamco. So let's go ahead and go into that group real quick. And I wanna go to the original Stamco's image and we're gonna make a copy of that. And then we're gonna right click and convert this to a smart object. And we're going to go to filter and then we want to go to blur and we want to add motion blur to this. So the 13 pixels is going to work perfect for this. Let's invert the mask. And just on some of the edge here, we're going to paint this back in. So all this is going to do is just give this image just a little bit more life, add some motion to it. And like I said, it's just a nice fun effect and one extra little topping that you can add on to this nice piece here. So just around the edges, you don't want to go overboard with this, less is more. And once that's done, you want to merge all these together in a new layer at the top, convert it to a smart object and go to filter, camera raw filter for our final adjustment. Now, since I did a lot of adjustments already with our original images, I'm just doing some minor, minor tweaking like adding some contrast and adding some sharpening and that is going to do it. I already like the colors. So here we are with that and as I mentioned before, now what I did, and I don't have it recorded, but I'm going to just take some other images where the logos and everything is in the right direction. I'm going to patch some of this up here. And as you can see right now, here's the final, final image with those uh, newly adjusted patches, cleaning up some of those uh, lettering so that it's facing the right way, as well as I've added a little bit of text um, logo just adding Steven Stamkos on there once more just kind of adding an extra layer to this entire piece But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it. That's gonna wrap things up for this uh, Tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it and again as I mentioned before This is something new and something different than some of my previous postings and if you like this style Please let me know down there in that comment section Give it a thumbs up if you like it and if you're not doing so already Please subscribe help out this channel so I can produce more videos in the future until next time, please be safe, and I hope to have you back again for our next video here at Blended Graphics. Take care, everybody.